Hey everyone, my name is Matt Wagner. A lot of you have already subscribed to this channel and you've been listening to the songs that I've been putting out over the past few years. So I want to thank you for subscribing and listening to the songs. Hopefully they've been able to minister to you in a way. I want to shift gears a little bit and start adding some different types of videos into this channel. So I've been in ministry for about 10 years vocationally, leading worship at a handful of churches. I've been at large churches, I've been at small churches, and for the first time I've really sort of settled into a role where I'm able to sort of build and craft the ministry here. I wanted to start doing some videos about very specific things in regards to worship leading. So some of them will be practical, some of them will be theological or methodological. My thought is we can start talking about sort of the ins and outs of what it means to be a worship leader how we lead people on and off the stage, how we shepherd volunteers, why we sing, how we set up tracks, how we set up a video recording for a song. All those kind of topics I wanna to talk about in this series of videos. And so for our first video today, I want to address what I believe to be sort of the foundation of a healthy worship ministry. And it starts in the Word of God. So today we're gonna to look at scriptures that sort of tell us how we can conduct our ministry as worship leaders, sort of tell us why we sing and how we can filter that through everything. And then also we'll look at the vision and the values that I've set for my own team. And this is a set of six values that I've come up with uh, from scripture over the past 10 years through experience and through leading and just seeing how people interact in teams. So let's get started. So the biggest foundational scripture that I find helpful for worship leading is Colossians 3.16. And it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom with psalms and hymns and singing spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. So there's a few things in that verse that we can sort of dissect. The verse speaks to singing and it speaks to why we sing. So we see right here in this verse, it says, let the word of Christ dwell in us richly, singing songs and hymns and spiritual songs. So we see that songs and hymns and spiritual songs are a way that the word of Christ can actually dwell or take root in our heart. So if you think about it, this makes absolute sense. Songs have this way of uh, through rhythm and rhyme and melody, they have this way of sticking things to your memory, right? Like you might listen to your favorite podcast or you might hear your favorite sermon and remember maybe three or four statements from it, but think about how many choruses to songs that you know by memory because there's rhythm and melody. All of that helps the Word of Christ dwell in us. It's why it's so important that we sing songs that are straight from the Word of God. We don't want to sing songs that are not true. We want to sing songs that are rooted in the truth of Scripture because that is what we want to dwell in our hearts. It's the truth of God's Word. So songs are a way that the Word of Christ can dwell in us. And then it says not only dwell in us, but dwell in us richly. So there's songs that are broad in the, in the topics they talk about. They're very rich and they're very uh, wide in the theological concepts that they're singing about. And then there's songs that are more narrow that really hone in on one specific aspect of God or one specific uh, part of the gospel. For the Word of God to dwell in us richly, it means not only that we need to sing the same truth over and over and over so that it is in us richly, but also that we need to sing a vast array of truths that come from Scripture. So if every song that we sing is only about the love of God or only about the goodness of God, but we don't sing songs about uh, how we look to Christ in suffering or about how Christ fulfilled the law and the prophets. If we only sing songs about one particular thing, the Word of God through those songs is not dwelling in us 
richly. And so it's important from this scripture we see to have a good array of songs at our disposal that talk about uh, and sing about various aspects of who God is, of what he's done in Jesus Christ, and of how we can live and walk in holiness as believers. Moving on in the verse, it says simply, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another. So songs are actually a way of teaching and admonishing or encouraging one another in truth. So if you think about it, someone who uh, maybe is walking into your church doors for the first time, they maybe have never heard of a certain truth of scripture. And it's a truth that you're singing about in a song. Well, for someone who is not a believer, for someone who has not read a lot of the Bible and doesn't know a lot of the truths of Scripture, that's going to be their first time hearing that truth is sung in a song when they walk in the doors of your church. So in that sense, songs are literally teaching people new truths and hopefully pointing them to the gospel of Jesus Christ so that they may be saved. But it also is a way of teaching believers in Christ truths as well. So teaching is uh, not just You give someone truth one time and then they've got it, right? Any of us that have been in education know you need to hear the same things over and over and over to learn well. And so songs are a way of teaching and reiterating truth to believers, reminding us of truth that we need to hear, reminding us of the gospel, reminding us of God's goodness, reminding us of his sovereignty, reminding us of his grace. And then also with teaching comes admonishing or encouraging one another. So the word of God has encouragement with it. There's verses, this is why people put verses on coffee cups and plaques and pictures on their walls because there are verses that are encouraging to people during times of need. Try to think back and remember during times of struggle, during times of suffering, a lot of times, at least for me, I'll have particular songs in my memory that are tied to those times of suffering that helped carry me through that time because they reminded me of God's truth. And so songs, if they are proclaiming the truth of scripture, they are an encouragement and they're a way that we can encourage one another, admonish one another. Yes, we are singing to God, but we are also singing for the benefit of each other to teach one another and to encourage one another in the truth of God's word. In the second half of the verse, it talks about just the different types of songs. It says singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And there's a lot of people that have gone into descriptions of what they think all these different types of songs are. Uh, We're not gonna do that today, but I think it's important to note that there are different types of songs that we sing. Even in music, in worship music today, when uh, when you visit a church, you'll hear songs that are sung to God and uh, only to God. These are songs that don't have a lot of you know, pronouns like me, we, or I in them. There are a lot of songs that are just addressed to God, so that's one type of song. Um, there's a lot of songs that are that talk about what God has done for us specifically, and those, those do have pronouns in them like me and I. This song's like, Lord, I need you. Um, it's sort of, a, sort of a, a confessing, like, Lord, help us. You help us, and you will, and we ask you to help us. And then there's songs that sort of uh, repeat attributes of God over and over, his, his goodness, his kindness, his love, um, and we just sing about the attributes of God. So there's different types of songs that we sing and that we lead as worship leaders. And I think that's really the point here in this, in this scripture is that we need to be singing an array of different types of songs because those different types of songs teach us different things about God and encourage each other in a different way. The last part of that scripture is really simple, but it says, with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And so songs are a response of gratitude to all that God is and all that he has done for us in Jesus Christ. And so when we approach singing, especially when we approach leading songs, we are to approach these songs with gratitude in our hearts, thanking the Lord for who he is, singing his truth and proclaiming who he is for all the world to hear. There's another scripture that has really helped me uh, in a more practical sense develop worship ministry over the years. 
and it's a simple one. Most of you will know it, but it's Psalm 33, 3. It simply says, sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings and shout for joy. And so there's three things right there just within that small scripture that you can take and uh, apply to your worship ministry. Number one is sing to the Lord. It tells us who we're singing to, right? We are singing to the Lord. Now it is for the benefit of us as well. It teaches us and encourages each other as we talked about in their verse before. But we're primarily singing to the God of the universe. So it, it, it tells us who we address in song. And then it says, sing to him a new song. So this can be taken quite literally. Yes, uh, we shouldn't be singing just the same songs over and over again. There's a new aspect to songs that we bring to lead people in worship. We should be singing new songs, really simple. But also in that newness, it's not just talking about new songs. There's also a newness and a freshness that happens each time we come together. So we can sing the same song and it can minister to us in a new and a fresh way. Uh, I think there's also a call to creativity there and to create new songs and to create uh, versions of old songs in a new way that help people see the truth in a new light. Sometimes we get sort of jaded to the way we've heard songs done over and over again, but if we hear it in a slightly different way with a slightly different arrangement, sometimes that truth of that song can really stand out to us in a new and fresh way. The last two pieces of that scripture, it says, play skillfully. So there's a call to excellence in all that we do as worship leaders, as worship musicians, as a team. Yes, make a joyful noise. I'm all for that. But clearly in scripture, we see that those who lead musical worship are skilled at what they do. And so for us, it's a challenge to uh, not be perfect, but it's a challenge to continue to strive for excellence. And that's what excellence is, I think, is a striving and a continuing development of your craft. Just a striving to be better at what we do so that we can serve the local body better, so that we can uh, praise our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ better and better each time we do it. And then lastly, in that verse, it says simply shout for joy. So when we approach the throne of grace each and every week in song, there should be a joy that comes with that. Um, now, that's not to say that we don't have sorrow as believers because there are times when we come sorrowful, we come mourning, but we are refreshed in the joy of Christ by the end of it, and that's okay. But each and every time we lead and we gather, it is a joyful experience to celebrate the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that's what we're after. We don't wanna come and try to lead and shepherd others through songs if we're not joyful about the truth that we're singing. So when we come to lead, we can bring the joy and the hope that is in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so from those two scriptures, I developed a vision statement for our team here at my church. And uh, it simply goes like this. It says, our goal as a worship team is to lead God's people into a deeper understanding of Christ by teaching the word of God through music, by serving others, and by walking in holiness. So this is kind of a simple statement that we live by. A couple big things there. We want to lead in understanding, right? The, the songs that we sing help teach truth and help understand and help remind people of truth. Hopefully those songs are coming from the Word of God. But we also don't want to just lead with music and teaching truth. We want to lead in serving others and walking in holiness. So we want to lead in ways that we can be in community and be authentic with one another. We can serve one another. We can pray for one another. We can be part of the local church. But then also we want to be able to walk in a way that people would look at us and say, they're following Christ. That doesn't mean we walk in a way that's perfectionistic. It doesn't mean that we never sin, but it means that we are striving and striving towards holiness in Christ Jesus. We want people who see us leading on stage to also see us leading in every area of life. For the last piece of the video today, I wanna to cover the six values that we adhere to as a team. These are six values I've come up with from different resources, from scripture, that I think really help keep us on focus. So the first one is this, 
we value Christ above all. Colossians 3.16 points us to that right from the start, right? It says that the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And so Christ and his gospel is the foundation of everything that we do. We are singing so that people might be saved. We are singing so that people might be reminded of who Christ is and all that he's done for us in his death, in his burial, and his resurrection. Luke 10 points to this. It says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength and all your mind. That is who we want to be as a team. We want to love Christ with all that we are. Second value is this. We value the word of God richly. So the word of God, the Bible, is our primary source for spiritual growth, for living and direction, and for ministry practices as a team. That is what we turn to for answers. That is what we turn to for guidance. It is the very words of God. And so we cling to those words and we hang on to those and we base everything we do off of the word of God. In uh, Isaiah 55, it reminds us, it says, so shall my word that goes from out of my mouth, it shall not return to me empty. This is God saying, his word will not return void. His word will always be able to guide and direct and save and encourage. The third value is we strive for excellence. So Psalm 33, three reminds us of that, that we are to play skillfully. And we talked about this a little bit already, but excellence is not perfection. Excellence is striving to be better and better at what we do. So it's a continual improvement and development. And that's really why I'm making these videos is improvement, and development, Hopefully, they'll be able to help people strive for excellence in some form or fashion. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, it reminds us that all things that we do, we should do with excellence and for the glory of God. It says, so whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. That's how we want to lead people is giving the most amount of glory to God that we can, doing things with excellence and giving him 100% of who we are. The fourth value we try to adhere to is we treasure Christ-like community. The New Testament church depicts a picture of how Christians are to live and to interact with each other. In Acts 2.42, it says they devoted themselves to teaching and the breaking of bread and prayers. And they were selling all their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had a need. So this is a community of people that were devoted to God's word and loving each other. That's who we want to be as a team. So for me, it's really important that, you know, maybe someone on the team is, is coming in and they're really skilled and they're really great at their instrument. They're really great. They have the bombest vocals in the world. They can hit all the harmonies. But if they're not interested in investing in the community and being known as part of the team and contributing and bearing one another's burdens, with each other then there's a disconnect right they're only interested in the skill and the spotlight but not in the community and the love and the compassion for one another that's more important to me that we as a team are able to embody what community looks like according to scripture so practically this this happens with team nights uh, this happens with just checking in on people um, showing one another that we care for each other. Uh, this happens with, you know, making rehearsals a way that we uh, really can, can dive in and get to know each other. Um, instead of just making them purely practical and coming and executing the songs that week, um, I try to make them fun and engaging and just uh, a way that people can come and connect with each other while they're serving together. So the fifth value we try to adhere to is we serve others above ourselves. And that kind of shakes out in a lot of different ways. So the first way is kind of embodied in what we just talked about, which is just that we care for one another and we care how each other is doing and um, we hopefully are looking out for others' interests above our own. The second way is sort of in a more musical way. So when we uh, show up with our instrument, we always try to serve the song. An example of this would be you know, serving yourself would look like, let's say I'm a guitar player and I show up 
and there's an instrumental in the song, so I take the opportunity to rip a solo that no one has ever heard before as fast as my fingers can go. It's not really serving the song, it's actually serving yourself, right? So serving others above yourselves can be other people, it can be uh, other things, so it can be serving the song, it can be um, just not having a selfish attitude and really being able to collaborate together as a team to serve the goal and the mission of the team, which is to proclaim the truth of God through song, without distraction, simply and through song. In uh, Colossians chapter 1, it reminds us of how the body uh, does this. It says, and he is the head of the body, that's Christ. Christ is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, and that in everything he might be preeminent. So above anyone else, above ourselves, above everything, we serve Christ. And that selflessness that Christ shows us and exemplifies for us should translate into everything that we do so that we should be actually serving and not serving with a hidden agenda or a selfish motive. The last value that we try to adhere to is we value faithfulness before fruit. So that's not faithfulness instead of fruit, but it's faithfulness before fruit. Because the reality is that with faithfulness, fruit will come. But let's say someone auditions for the team and they have all the fruit in the world. They're amazing at what they do and uh, they have all the skills that are needed and they're a, you know, a prodigy, that's fine, but if there's no faithfulness that accompanies that, faithfulness to serve, faithfulness to practice, a commitment to be a part of the community and to be plugged in, then I'm, I'm really not interested in the fruit. I'm more interested in the person who is faithful and committed to the body of Christ because in that faithfulness, the fruit will come. In the, in the faithfulness and the continued commitment to serving the Lord through this ministry, fruit, development, and excellence, and all that will flow from that. Now that's not to say we just put people on the team that have no excellence at all, right? But I believe strongly that faithfulness is the most important thing that leads to fruit. In Revelation chapter 2, it says simply, be faithful until death and I will give you the crown of life. And that's our call as a team, as we lead and as we shepherd people, is to be faithful and steady and committed to serving the King of Kings. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully these values and this vision for a worship ministry is helpful to you. Hopefully it's something that you can implement in your own worship ministry and maybe tweak it and change it and do whatever you want to with it. Um, but hopefully the principles are something that you can take and apply to what you're doing. If you enjoyed this video, there'll be more stuff like this coming out, uh, both theological from scripture, uh, ministry related, but also more practical stuff with technology that we implement, um, how we carry out rehearsals, team nights, that kind of stuff. It's all coming soon. I don't have a schedule yet for when they're going to be released, but hopefully this year there'll be a lot of videos to come. So if you like this type of content, if you're finding it helpful, make sure to give this channel a like, give it a subscribe, and we'll see you guys for the next video. Thanks.